Hi everybody, Mr. Garrett here, and uh, I wanted to take a minute, and, or a couple minutes actually, and uh, go over some of the different things we were talking about in class in terms of mathematics of finance and annuities and things like that. And uh, This is the first of about three or four different videos going over um, some different problems that we're going to do, and then I'll also try and make some shorter videos over the example problems that we've had to do in class and uh, some other ideas. So uh, good luck, and I hope you enjoy uh, a few different uh, discussions here. So <clears throat> the first thing we talked about was uh, what what an annuity is. An annuity is a sum of money that's paid in regular equal payments. Um, an annuity can be when you're saving for something, which would be like a final amount of annuity or a future amount of annuity for college savings or retirement. Or you could have an uh, annuity that's paid back to you, such as when you retire or when you win the lotto or something along those lines where you're receiving equal payments. We also use annuities when we're talking about loans and mortgages of buying a car or buying a house, and we pay those back as an annuity. So. Um, so those are all the different types of things that we're going to be working with, and let's uh, kind of get into it. So <clears throat> if I want to start saving some money for Grace to go to college, I'm going to invest $10,000 right now. Uh, you have, I have 15 years before Grace is going to go to school, and that's going to grow in a savings account with 6% interest compounded monthly. So you can see that right here, 6% compounded monthly. We know this formula, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT from Algebra 2. And we know that if we plug the information in that we know, 12 is our N value because there's 12 months in a year. 12 times 15 is um, whatever that is, 180. And then we plug it all in and we get $24,540.94. Again, we talked about this in Algebra 2. Now, there's two bad things. One, don't have $10,000 to invest right now. And two, $24,000 is not going to pay for college. So I can afford to put $100 per month into our college fund. So what will this be 15 years from now? Well, if I take $100 and then I multiply that by 12 months in a year, that's $1,200 a year, times 15 years, that's $18,000. Some of you might be saying, Mr. Garrard, you're going backwards. Well, you're right, except I didn't take into account any interest that would be accumulated. So what would happen if I figure this out and compounded it monthly? Well, <clears throat> my first thing is going to be this first payment of $100. It's going to sit in the bank for 180 months. And so when it sits in the bank for 180 months, that $100 is going to turn into $245.41. Now my second $100 payment is actually going to turn into $244.19 because it's only sitting in the bank for 179 months. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to keep doing this over and over and over again. And you can see I do 178 months, and then we keep going all the way down to one month and then zero months. And what this has done is created a geometric series in which case I can add those numbers up, 100, $100.50, all the way up to $242.97, $244.19, and $245.41. Because I started here with the first payment being zero and the last payment being 180, I've actually made 181 payments in this geometric sequence, and when I add that all up, that gives me $29,327.28. Again, that's much better, but we still have some work to do. Because it's a geometric sequence, I can use the f sum formula for a geometric sequence. And I know that S sub n is a sum. Well, we're going to call that A sub f, or the future amount of annuity, or final amount. A sub 1 is our first term. That's going to be our repeating payments. R is actually 1 plus the interest rate divided by how many periods are in a year. And then N is how many payments we're actually going to make. So the I is, again, the interest rate divided by the period. So for making monthly payments, we divide by 12. If it was quarterly payments, we divide by 4. Semi-annual, divide by 2. Periods in a year times the number of years is our N value. If I look over here and I substitute all these values in, you can see I get to A sub F equals R times 1 minus 1 plus I to the N over 1, plus, 1 minus 1 plus I. I do some math, and this is the formula I get down into. You don't have to worry too much about this, but we do need to worry about the final amount. 
So, using our new formula, how much will I save for Grace's College Fund if I save $100 per month in an account with 6% interest compounded monthly for 15 years? Here's my formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a sub f equals 100 times 1 plus 0 0.005, that's 0 0.06, divided by 12. Raise the 180th because we have 15 years times 12 months, that's 180 payments, minus 1 over 0 0.005, and I get $29,081.87. Now, what if I could afford $250 per month? Well, I'm going to do the same thing, it's just I'm going to save $250 a month, plug it into my formula, and I get $72,704.68. Now we're starting to get somewhere. But I started now when Grace is three, and what if I would have started when she was born three years ago? Uh, that would mean that I'd be saving for 18 years, not 15. And if I saved $100 per month, 6% interest, that would give me plug it all in, 216 months now, 38000 That's a big jump. That's $9,000 more than what we had, almost $10,000 more than what we had before. And if I save $250 a month for 18 years, I would plug that all in, 216 payments, and I get $96,838.30. Now that's what we're talking about. So the biggest difference isn't necessarily how much I saved, even though that does make a difference. The biggest difference is time. And so that's what we really want to focus on is the longer that we can save, the better off we're going to be. And that right there gives us <clears throat> a general idea of annuities. All right. Now, we can also do this. We can assume that college costs won't rise too much, hopefully, knock on wood, and it'll cost approximately $100,000 for Grace to go to college. How much would I have to put into her college fund each month to get to $100,000 if I have a 6% interest rate? Well, we have this formula here, but we can flip it around and put in what we know multiply by the reciprocal and get R equals 100,000 times 0 0.005 over the 1 plus 0 0.005 to the 216 minus 1, and that's $258.16. So if I were to save $258.16 for 18 years, that would get me pretty close to the $100,000 I was looking for.